All right, so I'm just making this video about this duo therm furnace. I got a 1982 20 foot travel trailer and I got this old furnace in it, a duo therm. I was trying to look up parts for it. It's really hard to find any parts, any information really at all. And I was searching on YouTube just for videos. It didn't really come up with very much stuff at all. So after fiddling around with mine for a while, and I think finally coming uh, to a solution to the problem that I had, I figured I might as well record a video and put it up on YouTube because maybe I wasn't the only one searching. The problem that I had was an intermittent problem. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. But basically, out here in Colorado right now, it gets pretty cold at night, and I would go to sleep, the furnace would be running, seems like everything's going smoothly, and I would wake up two or three in the morning or something it'd be 30 something degrees inside of here and that's no good so basically the problem was it would not continue running throughout the night wouldn't keep me warm throughout the night i'd wake up the blower would still be going it'd be cycling it'd be just blowing cold air out the burner was not running it wasn't blowing hot air out so i messed around with it took it apart a few times and here's what i came up with hope it helps you out all right, all right, back at it. Just having this banana breakfast. I think we might, I think we might got it. All right, so ignition, flame sensor, thermocouple, something like that, gas valve. Now you can't really see that much right there, but there's um Okay now you can see better. Those are the burners with the little slits. It's like a little three-piece set, little cross section there. Electrode assembly. <clears throat> now the spark is gonna go from that far right one to the middle. Now you notice there is some corrosion on it a little bit. I'm gonna clean that off. The distance between these two, I was just observing it carefully and I was like, you know, it seems like they could be spread a little bit further apart, which would create a bit more of a spark, giving the gas a better chance to ignite, right? That's what I think. So I've disassembled it yet again. And, um, you see, I have it sitting out. The gas, the gas is not hooked up, but we're just going to check the operation of that ignition. See that? That's far. Now, and then you hear, you hear a little click. That little click is the gas shut off. Basically what's happening is the furnace knows that ignition failed so it's shutting off the gas as a safety feature so you're not just pumping gas out that's not burning you want it to be burning but if that spark is not there or even is just not enough if it's not enough of a spark arcing across there it might not ignite that gas and I know that it's getting gas because I can smell it when I disassemble it and I shut the valve turn it shut the propane tanks off obviously close the valves on those and then you come in here you could smell the gas it's getting gas the gas is not being properly ignited so let me see if this works I'm gonna try it out right now I'm gonna put it back together I'll check back in with you momentarily got it all pulled out this is you're looking at the front it slides in there like that right so now you can see I've got, I've got that far right electrode. I'm sorry, I'm holding the phone so I can't point to it. There's three, right? There's one, two, three. The third one, that one on the right, sparks with this middle one. And as you can see, I've spaced them out, almost lining up just kind of with the width of those burner vents there. So any bigger than that is really just a, a waste of trying to get it to arc across that. So we're just going to check it 
real quick hook it up without the gas make sure that that spark is good you see i've cleaned i've cleaned them as best as i can notice there's a crack right there on that little ceramic piece right so that comes out up through here to this ceramic piece which connects to that orange wire now these slide in here and there's actually they gotta kind of line up really good to get it all the way in keep that in mind if you're <coughs> excuse me doing this at home so start from the top got these wires right here black boom orange and blue boom you got this one up here okay it connects sorry about the camera work I'm doing my best one-handed here okay now the the last thing right this looks a little shady but you know it, it's the connection works as far as I know I think that this was our problem down here so let's see let's see gas disconnected keep that in mind we're just testing the spark Let's see. Oh, see, it's too far. It's arcing right down into the... Yeah. So we'll have to adjust that. Okay, we're back. I just adjusted it a little bit closer. The middle one with the one on the right. To get that spark just the, the way that it needs to be. So let's try one more time. Yeah, you see, it's going across, it's not hitting the burner like it was. That's a good spark. That's a good spark, family. Let me give you one more good look at it, because I'm about to slap this thing back together. I'm going to slap this thing back together and try it out. It got cold last night in here. Not too bad, but like 40. I'd like to keep it 50 if I could. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, so... Here we go. I need to watch what's happening. Let me, let me, let me set it. Set it all right. Watch what's happening here. See this part? And then that's the gas shut off. Safety feature I was mentioning. All right. It's the best I can do, man. That's a good spark. Let's put it back together test it out all right we're back back with the test got everything back assembled um these screws right here go all the way around and if you can see on the bottom um i still have one more to put in and uh those are tricky ones and i'll show you if you can't get to them first off you're gonna need an extension kind of like that on your drill is what i'd recommend right because you got to kind of squeeze in there so in in combination with that i take a flathead screwdriver i stick it in there and i and not too crazy just just pry it up just enough to get you the room you need to be able to squeeze in there. Cause as you can see right now, there's not enough room. So if you, if you kind of wedge, you wedge that in there, pop it up and you'd obviously need both hands. But like I would do that with my free hand, which is holding the phone right now, I would grab the drill and pop it in there. But anyway, I'll put that last screw in. I haven't forgot about it. Just, this is connected. This right here is connected, right? See it's a little piece black plastic piece with two metal plugs on the inside that snapped together had to make sure these are back on make sure that you hopefully you had your fuses uh pull your fuses or shut off your breaker or whatever you got to do before you're doing all this stuff uh gas line hooked back up gas valve open and here's hopefully i had to replace here's where we're going to see the magic hopefully i had to replace this thermostat uh, it's just a mechanical thermostat it's only just for heat it's not like a uh, what do they call it you know 
full climate control programmable all that it doesn't have that it doesn't even have a display but it's the simplest thing so that's really all i need let's try it out so turn it on and as you can see we've got action that burner is going good and you hear that telltale little when you hear that little creaking noise that's the metal heating up you're in business you're good to go when you hear that i actually love hearing that sound because that means i'm not about to freeze <sighs> not today at least who knows it might act up again tomorrow but so far it looks like it's working Hope this video has helped you. I'm not an HVAC technician or anything. I just experiment with stuff. I have some tools and I'll take it apart, look at it, try to understand how it works, put it back together. This may have solved it. I hope it has solved it. One last thing I just wanted to mention to you guys also is I had took this to a guy to have him look at it, a mobile RV repairman. And uh, he came recommended to me from someone else. And I just want to tell you what happened. I drove it out uh, to a town not far from here where I'm at right now. And I opened up my door. I was already kind of taking just the front of the furnace off just to make his job a little bit easier. I, he was doing some stuff, so I was just getting it ready for him to take a look at it. He took the one look at it. And the first thing he said was, that thing is a dinosaur. You need a new furnace. You can't even find parts for that. Now, I believe what he was saying is true about the parts. You may not be able to find them, but don't let someone tell you that you need a new whatever, a new furnace or something. Because basically with a screwdriver and some sandpaper and a drill and a couple hours of time, a lot of frustration, honestly, but a couple hours of time, I was looking at buying a new furnace, $600, $700 for a suburban nt 24 nt 30 nt 34 whatever they are uh a lot more btus than this but i was getting ready to to spend that and try to install it myself or pay somebody else a few hundred dollars to install it so i could have easily saved myself a thousand dollars or close to it just by not giving up on this and messing around with it so don't let somebody try to sell you some new whatever it is without messing with it first a little bit i mean what have you got to lose Really do help this help you out. Uh, if it did, let me know. Any questions, feel free to ask. But again, I'm not an HVAC technician, so I can only really just explain the stuff that I've learned from messing around with my own Duotherm 1982 furnace. Still working. Still working right now. As you can see, it's set at about 70. It's keeping it at about 60 or 65, something like that. And back here in my sleeping area, it's 55 degrees. Not toasty, but you know what? It's fine. I got the thermal on, winter hat, get a blanket, cozy, cozy blanket. You'll be all set. Good luck.